Hey everyone, so this video is basically just going to be a stream of consciousness about my experience with depersonalization and derealization. I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe. I'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up if you find any of the information useful. Um, and yeah, just please enjoy. I recorded this kind of on a whim, so it's a bit messy, but let's go. Hey everyone, today I just want to talk about depersonalization and derealization because this is something that I get a lot of questions about and it's something that I have a lot of experience with. So I basically want to talk about my experience with depersonalization and derealization from when I first experienced it to how I dealt with it to how it made me feel and just basically how tell you how I also got rid of it. Um, because it was a long journey and I know a lot of people out there feel stuck this way as if it's never going to go away I will say yes, it can go away When I was younger, I really thought okay, I'm gonna be completely stuck with this feeling in this weird way um, you know forever but I Can tell you now that that wasn't the case for me and I'm sure because I spoke to a lot of other people with the same thing that it won't have to be the case for you as well. So let's let's just get into it. So when I was younger, you know, I started experiencing quite, you know, severe anxiety from a young age. And I remember just, you know, I remember I was watching a TV show and it was talking about near-death experiences when I was like six years old. And for some reason that threw me off and just made me, you know, go into the spiral of thinking, wow, people actually die. Like what happens when you die? Where, where does your consciousness go? Uh, why am I alive right now? And, and, you know, just going down that whole existential route. And it really, you know, scared me and at, at the age of like six or seven years old. And I was terrified. And I remember going to the, the supermarket with my dad and just suddenly it hit me like a wave. I started feeling like everything around me was was fake or wasn't real it was like I was in some kind of dream and everything just just started I, I couldn't describe it and I tried to tell my dad like something's wrong something feels weird and I'm really scared and all this energy of like you know this adrenaline and things came over my body and it wasn't a panic attack but it was just more of a you know a constant feeling of something is seriously wrong and everything looks weird and then this kind of you know, stayed like that for a long time and I kind of got used to it and it scared me every single day and it would become a lot of my conversation was, you know, I don't feel right, I feel weird, something's wrong. I, I don't know what's going wrong, there's something wrong with me from this very young age. And, you know, there were times when it would go away and there were times where it would come back, but there was always this underlying thing of, I'm very worried about, you know, the world or life or something. And it was, you know, manifesting in this way where everything just felt incredibly fake and strange. So that's my first kind of experience with it. I just remember, you know, if I would get like a present or a gift or something, I remember just looking at this item in my hands and just feeling like, this is, what is, this is fake. Everything feels weird. This is this. One way, one good way of describing depersonalization or derealization more specifically um, is that everything around you looks very, you know, fake or very um, cloudy, foggy. So one good uh, example is to take a glass and kind of just look through it. And this kind of blurriness or like the gray feeling, it's very hard to explain. But I'm sure if you've dealt with it, if you're watching this video, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. These feelings are are terrifying. And then I used to, I remember I used to tell my teachers at school, I used to tell them, I, it feels like I'm, my head's chopped off. And I know this is really weird, but I remember I told the teacher, it feels like my head is chopped off here and it's like floating and I'm floating above my body and everything's fake. And I'm like looking at myself from behind. And I just remember the look on my teacher's face, like, wow, like, they didn't know how to deal with this and no one knew, you know, what to think about that. And that is a scary experience, especially when you're young, when the people that are supposed to, you know, be able to, to give you certainty and to give you like, you know, make you feel safe, just kind of look at you like, okay, something's wrong here. And basically for years, I just kind of accepted, yeah, this is my life. 
I'm there's something seriously wrong with my brain you know I had the fear that okay what if I'm actually in a coma and this is all really a dream for a very long time as well and that still comes up sometimes it's very scary you know it's a thought that comes up but I just accepted this is what life is like uh, there's something seriously wrong with me I'm just crazy there's something wrong and I'm gonna have to live like this forever but I was still very scared of what I was feeling I was still very worried like why me this was the question why do I feel like this when I speak to this with anyone you know the doctors you know a therapist they don't know what I'm talking about and I remember the, um, the first time that I you know went to therapy and got in contact with a therapist they also didn't know what I was describing or what I was talking about you know and they every time I'd mention it it was one of the the most important things why I was worrying they were just kind of push it aside it was like oh it's just a side thing it doesn't matter and that kind of you know pushing aside of you know my most important worry disregarding it just made me even more scared um yeah this is it's something terrifying now there were times when it would go kind of go away and there was a period of my life when i was maybe 14, 15, 16, 17, where actually my anxiety went away a lot and I lived, you know, quite normally and I didn't notice this feeling um, as much and it went away. But then suddenly in a time of, you know, severe anxiety and stress and things going on, it came back um, slowly at first, but it came back. Now, you know, I'm kind of brushing over things a lot because, you know, it's it's hard to... Basically, I lived, you know, most... More of my life, I lived in a state of DPDR than I didn't. Um, and even today, it's not that I don't have it or that it... It's not that I don't have it or that I don't experience it. It's that I just don't... I absolutely don't care and I know what it is now and it doesn't bother me. Um, and that... I mean, that's really the key. What I learned is that <clears throat> I'd noticed that in times of, you know, when I'm really anxious, when I'm really worried and scared, um, I would begin to feel, you know, more of this sensation. And it could last for months. I just remember it lasting for so long. Um, I wasn't able to get rid of it. It was very terrifying, but it would, it would keep going. But over time, what I did was that I remember I was searching online and I was like describing every way I felt, you know, it feels like everything's a dream. I don't know what's going on. I can't tell if I'm awake or not. Am I in a coma? All of these, you know, things I was searching, trying to find the answer for what, you know, what was happening to me. And I never, and I really, it took so long to find it. It took years to find it until finally I came across the Wikipedia thing for depersonalization. And I said, oh my goodness, this is probably what I'm feeling like. And then I went to a Facebook group, and t uh, a Facebook and t typed it in. And I found a Facebook group for depersonalization and derealization. And there were so many people feeling the same way. And that was like a groundbreaking moment for me. And I remember I signed up to some course that was telling me how to get rid of my anxiety and depersonalization as well. I didn't have the money, obviously, to, to sign up. But I remember in the emails that they sent me, it basically told me, that when I feel this way, when I feel this depersonalization and, I, and when I get scared of it, that I need to invite it in and tell it, hey, okay, so I'm feeling depersonalized, I'm feeling everything feels fake. Okay, get how much more can you can you throw at me? Give me some more. I, you know, I want more of this. You know, I want this to happen. You know, come on, you're my friend. And the moment I learned that, that's when things started to change. Now, it wasn't instant. But I just started saying, oh, you know what? Come on, let's do this. Give me all you got. I want. I just want this to happen. And over time, I actually started getting moments of clarity where, oh, you know, I feel, I feel kind of fine for a minute. It feels like, you know, I feel like what I remember like being normal was. Now, for me, it was kind of hard because I had so much time like this. I don't really know what normal was, but it just it didn't bother me. And, and I could kind of go around my day. I remember it used to be that when I would walk into another room, that would that would horrify me because the change from walking to one room to the next would just make me feel so fake and, and unreal. 
and dissociated. It was it was terrible. But then I could find, you know, I was walking around different places and I wasn't worrying at all. And there's uh, some police or something like that in the background. But anyway, so where was I? So I started to just invite this into, I, you know, I wanted it to happen. I was like, okay, please, how much worse can it get? You know, but in a positive way, like I wanted it to get worse. And it's really hard to do, but once you do it, you know, you're already feeling like this. And just so you know, if you are feeling like this as well, that is the worst it gets. This horrible feeling and feeling, you know, you're not going to go crazy. There's nothing wrong with you. But that is the worst it gets. And I know a lot of the worry is, what if something's wrong with me? What if something's wrong with my brain? You start going into health anxiety roots, like, oh, there must be, a, I must have a brain tumor that's making me feel like this. I felt like that a lot. There must be something seriously wrong. Or you just feel like, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go in the mental hospital and all things like that. Um, but no, there's, this is a real symptom of anxiety. Now, at the time when I was experiencing it, I don't think there was much as much known as it about it as there is now. Um, but now when I speak to, you know, therapists and things, it actually is, there's quite a lot of material about it. For example, this book, Overcoming Depersonalization and Feelings of Unreality, a self-help guide using cognitive behavioral techniques by Dawn Baker, Elaine Hunter, Emma Lawrence, and Anthony David. This I bought like only a couple of years ago, I had no idea these types of things existed. And, and just knowing that these exist now, I just I'm so glad that it's going to be easier for other people to get access to this information. But really, it comes down to when it comes down to it, I guess what this is, is, you know, it, I've heard it described as a kind of defense mechanism, you refine this a lot with panic attacks and anxiety, right? You know, if you're in a if you're a, a lion is out to get you and it's going to you know attack um you know you get all the panic symptoms you're racing heart you get shaking because you're you need oxygen for your muscles your breathing speeds up but also you kind of desensitize you you everything becomes you may you don't notice it at the time that's the thing you don't notice these feelings when there's a real danger going on but it happens but what usually happens is you deal with the situation, you, you're overwhelmed, you, you calm down, you escape whatever the danger is, and once it's gone, your anxiety levels drop and these feelings kind of fade away. And because you're in a major, you know, scary situation, you don't think anything of how your body reacts. And this is the same whether it's depersonalization, derealization, or just a racing heart or all those feelings. We're misinterpreting that. But then what seems to happen is, and I guess because humans are kind of smart, we get a bit anxious for any reason or we get panicked for any reason that may not be, you know, it could be anything that, that starts it. And then, and then we are naturally inquisitive, especially if you have anxiety. I'm sure you, you're always looking for answers. You want to know everything. You hate uncertainty. And you feel this feeling and your brain instantly goes, well, what is this? Why do I feel like this? I need to know why. Something's wrong. And that causes you anxiety, right? But but this is part, but this is coming from anxiety. So you feel these symptoms, you feel this depersonalization, you you feel anxious, you start to get depersonalized and you notice the feeling and that scares you. But that feeling itself is an anxiety symptom. So now your anxiety symptoms are fueling your anxiety and now you've created this constant stream where you don't give your body the time to rest. Like when the danger goes away, you're like, okay, okay, that's it. We're done. I've dealt with it. But now the danger is the feeling that comes when you're anxious. I'm trying to describe this uh, as, as, as clearly as I can, but basically you're scared of your body's own defense mechanism now. And you notice this feeling and it's because it's such a psychological feeling, because it's so experiential, it's very hard to escape it. So 24-7, you're feeling this feeling and you're fueling it at the same time. So you're getting worried, you know, oh God, I still feel this way. You wake up in the morning, is it gone? And then it's there and you get these chemicals coming up or whatever hormones, you know, these, the adrenaline and everything. Even if it's, you know, not a panic attack, you're still, it's still happening. And you're still getting anxious and all these bodily, you know, functions are happening and they are, con they are fueling this depersonalization and it's all down to the fear of it. 
because now you don't it doesn't go away because you're still scared of the feeling itself if you didn't care if you com could completely say you know what i could live like that i really don't care but you care about like your quality of life you care about you know being able to experience things you know if you really didn't then this thing these things it wouldn't bother you and you just get on with your life you know if it scares you so much that you're unable to eat if you just say okay i accept this this is how i'm going to live forever now this is what i'm going to do this is this is my life and and if you could truly not care your body would just say okay i'm hungry now and you just move on to the next thing and I mean, it's tough thinking about this because I've dealt with this for a long time and I know it sounds, you know, I'm making it sound easy, but it's not easy. But it's really that fear that's fueling the symptom to keep happening constantly. And the more you kind of embrace it and let it in and ask for it to get worse, the more you're teaching yourself, this is okay, I can live with this. And then ironically, the more you accept it and embrace it and maybe even start to like it because it is kind of interesting then it goes and for me how it went away was it wasn't just you know gone i started having moments of clarity you know each day was a little bit better and then it just come back and i'd get an i've had i'd have an anxious day and i'd get it really bad for a few weeks but i get these little breaks of clarity and then over time as i'm really you know telling it oh, i don't care you know come on they would get longer and then over a few months eventually it got to the point where the moments of clarity were longer than the moments that i felt depersonalized and that was an important difference and that's when i realized what i was doing was really working because before i had no moments of clarity and i was very engulfed in this and once i started getting these moments of clarity you know it became clear that you know what this is what i need to do i just need to accept it and then as you start living your life and you start being able to do more things because you're not being restricted by, you know, if I go outside of my routine, I'll feel weird. Or if I do this, I'll feel weird. and I don't want to feel like that. And you start just living. It eventually gets to the point where you don't, it, you, you forget about it. You really forget about it. And that's why you'll find, you know, when you join like a Facebook group about depersonalization, derealization or anything like that, the people that have recovered, you know, it's rare that they'll return to that group because a lot of the time these groups are keeping your mind focused on the fear of this feeling. And the people that get out of that, they, they're just living their lives now. You know, they don't need to come back. Some people come back to help others, but people who, who, who move on, who get over this, they don't need to tell their success story. They're living their life now and they're getting on with it. You know? And that's what I was able to do with in, in terms of this. And yes, I still get anxious and it still happens. You know, I still get terrified sometimes. And I still feel, you know, depersonalization and derealization. But the difference is, I know that it's part of my anxiety. And the depersonalization, depersonalization and derealization doesn't scare me at all. And I just let it happen. For me, one of the most common times it still happens today is, is when I drive and when I'm anxious about driving. And then, you know, every I'm driving, I'm like, oh my God, I feel weird, everything feels fake. And I just go, well, okay, that, that's fine. My, I, my, my body knows what it's doing, you know. We have pretty good autopilot as humans for some reason. I can drive from, you know, a, a really long way and just wake up, you know. And, and so I'm not, I don't worry about that. And I just allow it. And then as soon as I allow it, you know, it's, it, it just goes. And so, you know, this is a pretty messy video, you know, <laughs> I'm still getting used to the whole, the longer, the longer talks, but that's kind of, you know, how, so how my, how my depersonalization and derealization started and how, you know, my, a bit, a little bit of my journey with it and what I did to get rid of it. Now, you know, everyone's journey is going to be different. It's a scary thing. But I hope, if anything, this video gives you some hope that you will be able to get through it and hopefully gives you some insight into, you know, how this works and, and what, you, what you can do to help yourself. But just remember that you will be able to, to get through this. 
I have an anxiety fitness support group on Facebook. I'll leave the, the, the link in the description if you want to join there. Um, and we also have um, a community on Tevent where we do kind of events and live podcasts and stuff like that. So go ahead, check the description and check that out as well. But I'll leave some resources like books and things like that in the description for you to check out. Um, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to make this video to kind of just sit back. I didn't write a script or anything. I just wanted to talk about it because it's a topic that I hear about a lot. I'll probably make a more structured video in the future as I get more used to it. But I think this, this, this is good for me to just talk it out as well. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of the video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about it. And please, yeah, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and the bell icon. If you liked this, I'll be doing more videos like that. So just please let me know what you think. Um, and go ahead and share the video if you can. But yeah, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.